Alright, so this is going to be a bit of a short and sweet video because I've been quite busy the last few days and just wanted to put something out. But do let me know if you enjoy this format and I'll consider making more of these for other roles and things like that. But let's get into the top 5 tips to improve at solo lane. So these are meant to be just quick tips that you can implement into your game pretty easily. For more in-depth explanations and guides you can check out my other solo lane videos on the channel. But let's get into number 5. So this first tip is relating to minions. These little guys are your everything in solo lane. Enemy minions are your main source of XP and gold and you can get them all to your yourself and your own minions can be used as very effective weapons, especially in the early game. My main point here is to respect the archer minions. If you can try to focus them over warrior minions then do that, because they do over two thirds of the way's total damage output so once you get rid of those you can start looking to make more aggressive plays, as melee minion damage is actually quite low in comparison. I've seen many a solo player not respect archers and fight into me when I still have three of them and they lose pretty much solely on the fact that my archers hit them for 200 extra damage. And another quick note, be extra careful of minions if you're not rocking a warrior's blessing. You can often get used to being very tanky against minions because of the blessing, but if you then skip it one game, you can get annihilated by minions, so be careful on that one. Alright, so tip number four is about the importance of health sustain over mana sustain when you're playing solo. If you're coming over from another role, this is extremely important to recognise when you transition to solo, and if you're already a solo main and are buying mana sustain, you should reconsider. Where other roles like ADC, mid, maybe even jungle and support will want extra mana sustain in their builds and potions, solo is very different because of blue buff and the totem of Ku. Both of these offer incredible mana sustain and make buying mana pots all but unnecessary on most solo lane gods. Some specific gods like Hell and maybe other healers may want extra mana sustain, but for the most part it's unnecessary as blue buff gives 4 mana per second, and effectively has 100% uptime if you can keep on top of its respawn. And if you do manage to secure the Totem of Coup, that's another 25 MP5 for 10 seconds, and you can of course extend that duration by stepping back into your tower every now and then. The combination of these two is basically 9 mana every second back, so you, even if you're spamming your abilities constantly, it's hard to run dry of mana in solo. And that's not even factoring in base mana regen and mana from items. So yeah, health sustain is very important, mana sustain not so much in solo. And also, health chalice is really strong if you weren't already buying that in solo. Tip number three, always be thinking about what you're going to do between minion waves. Solo lane is a very optimised role at this point, and if the enemy is playing more efficient than you, they're gonna get a lead regardless of how you play. I've seen people get soloed twice in lane, but still have a golden XP lead because they farm like gods. So my piece of advice here is to always think about where you're going to go next while you're clearing a minion wave. Are you going to try and poke and harass the enemy laner, maybe look for a kill? Try to pressure the totem of coup? Is your jungler up and you can go over and grab your blue buff? Maybe you can evade the enemy blue buff? Are you going to proxy farm the next wave to free up some time and maybe make a rotation? Are you going to recall to get some items? If so, is your teleport up so you don't miss farm? Did you clear fast enough for a back camps invade and still be back in time for the next wave? I could go on and on about the ways you can spend your time between waves in solo, but you get my point. If you tell yourself while you're clearing that wave that you're going to go invade enemy back camps, you can then plan ahead and watch the map. Maybe the enemy jungler is on the opposite side of the map and it's a free invade for you, or maybe he just pinged up on a ward near mid lane and he's going towards those back camps, in which case it might be better not to bother. Always be planning ahead and nothing will surprise you as a solo learner. Moving on to tip number two, which is knowing when to recall. Sometimes in solo, you just have to back, even if it's not the ideal time for it. Maybe you're poked out heavily and risk dying if you stay in lane, or maybe you're just sitting on a lot of gold and need to buy some items or you'll fall behind in the fights. Of course having teleport helps with this which is why most solo laners pick it up as first relic, because it gives you that one free back every 200 seconds. But sometimes your teleport is down and you will have to potentially miss farm by backing. But if you stick around on low health, you're risking dying, which sends you back to the base anyway, and also gives the enemy free gold and XP for killing you, and you waste time respawning. If you do have pressure in the lane though, a good strategy to do before you back is to proxy the incoming minion wave behind tier 1 tower and then immediately recall. This can be risky if the jungler is about, but you can often sneak behind tower, take out the wave, and then back quickly before they have time to respond, which then gives you basically an extra 30 seconds to walk back to lane because you already dealt with that additional wave before you backed. Alright, and the final tip for this video is to be confident in your play. This might seem like a cop out but it makes a genuine difference regardless of matchup and skill level to just be confident and not afraid to take fights and play up to your opponent. If you're always doubting yourself and playing under tower you're just going to slowly slip behind and the enemy laner who is confident in their ability will ruin you. 
I've seen it too many times and I do it myself if I see the enemy laner isn't willing to fight me. I'll take some of the things I mentioned in tip number 3 like proxying their waves, invading buffs, securing every totem, invading enemy back camps, rotating to mid potentially, and just incrementally snowball my lead even without a single kill. At which point it may look like they're holding their own in lane if they're like 0-0, but then if you take a look at XP and gold they're down 2000 gold and 4 levels to me because I'm the one who's willing to make those risky plays and be confident in my ability to take fights and play aggressive. And this is something Thing anyone can do, no matter if it's your first game in solo lane or your 1000th game. You'd be surprised how much of a difference this makes to your play. Alright, but that's about it for my top 5 tips to improve at solo lane. As I mentioned at the start, be sure to let me know if you like this and I could give it a crack with the other roles as well, but they may not be quite as in depth as solo lane has been. But other than that, have a great day and I will catch you guys in another video. Peace out you nerds.